All right, all right, guys, and um, welcome back to the channel. So, in today's episode, we are going to be setting up the backend for Visa. And by the way, you see that we have some of the things we need up in place. However, it's still more like a shell compared to what we are going to have at the end of the day. So, I omitted one of the tools we are supposed to use uh, in the last episode. So, I mentioned that we are going to use Grow and Angular for the front end. However, I didn't mention that we are going to be exploring MongoDB for our back end. And I think I've said so in some of the last episodes that we are exploring MongoDB because the structure of our CAB network is not going to be too complex that we would require a Postgres or an SQLDB. So that's something to note. So for our MongoDB, we are going to be setting things up using Docker and here is the structure. And just so you have some insights, here is what the EMV looks like. And I'm going to be making use of an EMV value for the Mongo data, only to the fact that the way volumes is managed on a Windows machine is quite different from a Mac machine. So this is going to be something we are going to work with. So on a Windows machine, I need to kind of target my location where I'm going to save this data so as it gets persisted. And making this an environment means if you are now using it on a Let's say a Mac machine, you can just configure what works for your machine in that case. And also, I have gone ahead to set up a basic um, Go application, so through Go mod. And to do that, in case you don't know, you just do Go mod, then init the name of the system you want to work with. In our case, it's Finsa, so that works. So it's going to be Finsa. I click enter, and that should work. Also, I've gone ahead to create a make file to make this easy for us. And in here, we have the DB up, which is great to start the database. We have the DB down to drop the database whenever we need to. And we have the start process. And here is the main.go file, which is going to be the entry point into our application. So at the moment, if we run main.go, we should have this outputted. So let's test it out. Make start. And as you can see, we have hello world, which means uh, our operation is working as expected. So I can close this and we are good to group. It came in as a sharp process because we are running this using compile daemon. So I did mean we just run go run make I mean dot group. It's going to execute it and just go off. And yeah, that works as well. So these are the few files that have contents within it. However, you see that we have other folders here as well. We have the API. We is going to hold contents relating to our API. We have the DB and we have the utils. So for now, what we want to focus on is how to get every information from our environment into our utils. So we did that with Fingrid as well. So that's what we're going to start with. So let's pull that off. In our utils folder, we are going to create a new file called config.grow. And actually, before we get into that, I also want to introduce another tool we would make use of. So if I come down to the browser, we are going to be making use of the MongoDB compass. Not that we necessarily need it, but sometimes we just want to visualize what we have on our DB. And um, once we have that, we can start up our Docker Compose using Mage um, DB up, which is going to start up our Monroe DB. And you can set this up from your Docker desktop. And from here, you can see that the Mongo DB is currently running, which means we can come back to the Compass. Let's find it. So MongoDB Compass, and we are going to connect to it. So as you can see here, I have an initial connection, but just for a new scenario, to connect to our DB in this case, so let's take a look at some things. We find out that when setting up the DB, we defined it with a user and a password. That means to connect to this DB, we have to use this information. And we are using the default port, which is 27017, so we can confirm that from the environment. So now to connect to our DB, this would have been valid if we did not specify a user or a password. But since we did that, we are going to have to use the user, which is root, then column the password, which is secret, then add the host information. Then if we connect, we connect to the information. So we have it here. So I will be using this. I already saved one, which is this. I can remove this from here. We just go with things that. So yeah, that's all we're working with. So I'll close this for now. We don't need it. So coming back to my config.go file. Yeah, in our last um, backend setup, we made use of Viper to load in our config. We are still going to be making use of that. 
And to do that, we can import or install Viper. So let's install Viper. So we can do go get github.com slash spf tatsin slash Viper. So while that is doing, we can also name this package utils. Like that, because it's under the utils folder. Then next we can import the Viper we just installed. So import github.spf Viper. Then we can close this out. Then now we want to define the function to, or rather before we define the function to load in our config, let's define the config struct itself. So we can have type config. Then we have the struct. So we are just going to have all the Mongo information we specified on the uh, ENV. We can just copy all this. Come back here and replace. So Mongo Park, I'm not sure if we need it anyways. We can copy out things, but let's just put it in case we would do. So this is going to be a string. It's going to be a map structure. I think we've done that before. So let me replace this for the other ones as well. All right, so let's update the names. All right, so another thing we're going to put in here is the Moonbo connection. It's not going to have a structure because it doesn't really exist on the uh, ARV. However, we're going to need it to be available on the config struct so that we can use the connection later on. So we're going to have Moongo underscore connection, which is also going to be a string, but it's not going to have a map structure. It's not linking to any end content. So now we can define a font to load in our config. And remember, this is going to take in the parts of where the EMV is located, and this is going to be a string. And this is going to be an error or a config file. So like this. So the first thing we want to do is Viper, dot add config path and we're going to use the path we just specified then viper dot set config name which is going to be dot env then viper dot set config type so we've done this before you can always look that up to check what we did so what i'll do here next is just pick things out so vital dot automatic env All right, so the new thing here is the config.mongo connection. And this is what it looks like. It's going to create the connection string. So we have the MongoDB config, then everything like this. Just the way we went on to um, connect using the MongoDB compass. So we have this. And that's all for our node config. Now we can come back to the main.go and try to use the node config. So here we can have um, config and error. So we have config and error, which is going to be the node config into dots. So we need to pull this in. Oh no. So this should be utils, not just node config. Utils dots node config. So we are no longer using FMT. And we can check if error is not nil. Then we can panic error, else we want to FMT. Actually, we still need FMT dot print ln config dot mongo connection. So again, we can do make start and let's see if it works. And voila, that's what. And as you can see, we have the mongo connection, which looks good. So that is the first part of things, and it looks like it's working well. So with that done, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a connection to our database. So this is going to be rather new, considering the fact that we are working with MongoDB as of the first time. So now we can come back to DB here and create a new file, db.group. And again, we're starting with naming this package DB. So the next thing we want to do is we need the Mongo driver, okay? 
And because we are going to be working with Mongo, we need to install the Mongo driver for this. So again, we're going to come here, grow get grow dot mongodb dot org slash mongo driver. Then slash mongo. All right, so we have the Mongo driver installed and we can import it. So we can have imports. And for here, we want to have group.mongodb, then Mongo driver, then we also need the options. So control C and V, then options like that. So next, we want to create a struct to hold our database config. So here we're going to have type database. Then it's a struct. Then here we want to have the DB itself, which is going to be mongo.database. So this is referencing it. Take note of that. Then next we can have the connect to DB itself, which is going to be attached to the DB struct or have the database struct. So here we can have for D into database. Then we have the connect to DB. So this is going to take in the config and it's going to be referencing to the utils dot config. And the out here, we're going to have a reference to our database plot and a possible error. So the first thing we want to do, we have a structure already. We can decide to just go with this or we can write it um, specially. It's still going to be the same thing. Um, we're going to have client options. It is going to be equals to options, which are obtained from the driver options. Dot client. Then we apply the URI. And that's from the config dot mongo connection. So the URL already indicates the database name we are connecting to. So take note of that. So now we want to get the client, which is going to be Mongo Connect. Then we need to specify a contest initially. And for our contest, we can use contests the background. Then we have the client options. So if there is an error that we want to return new, then we can also have the FMT error F. So error connecting to Mongo and we specify the error string itself. Then next, if we have the clients, we want to ping it to see if we actually have something to interact with. And that's the contest for that. We can clear this for now. And now if there's an error trying to ping to the clients, again, we tell it that error pinging to Mongo clients and that's okay as well. Then we have the database, which is going to be DB clients, database this so this is the database we are dealing with and finally we can return so we are using the and d because we are putting the reference or new so that's the connection on half so obviously there doesn't look like an error so now we can test this again by coming in here and try to connect to our db so first and first we have to load the config we can do all this. Then the next thing is to connect to DB. So we can have our DB or error. Then we have DB dot connect. Actually, DB dot connect is not direct. So we have to access the database first. Then we have connect to DB. So we can print our DB. If error is not new, panic error then connected to dbs because we really don't have any information on db to print but let's just print it anyways let's see what happens okay looks like we have an error connecting to the db and i'm guessing it involves us specifying the database name so let's fix that and see so we come back to the config we are going to remove the database name we remove that and um, when we come back to the DB itself, we want to define the database here, then specify it later on. All right, so with the database parts removed, let's test if we can still connect or ping the NoGoDB server. So clear this out. 
make start. All right, so this time around, things are working well. So yeah, that's something to note. Your collection should not include the database string. So I went with that because um, Copilot suggested, but as you can see, Copilot is not always right. So yeah, that's just about that. So now we've been able to connect to our DB and we can load our configuration. We're going to round up to this episode here. And in the next one, we're going to set up our server and install Jim so that we can connect to the API. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.